Hey everybody, welcome back, Mike here. In today's video, we're gonna go over our final tier zero starting point box on Hack the Box, which is really exciting, by the way. Final one, we're done with tier zero. Next, we'll be going through tier one. And the box is called Synced. It's pretty straightforward, so let's just jump right into it and let's figure out this box. All right, so here we are. We have our IP address for our machine. Let's go ahead and copy that to our clipboard and head over to our Pwnbox instance. From there, we'll then go run our normal scan. We'll do nmap-v for verbose output. We'll do dash s, capital C for scripts to run all of those extra scripts that we've seen in previous videos. I'd like to do dash n to disable DNS resolution just to speed things up a little. You don't have to do this though. It's just a habit of mine. From there, let's copy in our IP address and then hit enter to run the scan. All right, and it's still running, but we do see right off the bat, we have port 873 open. So what I'm gonna do is, you know what, actually I like to have, uh, I'm kind of old school in this, in this regard, but I like to have this screen open and I like to open a separate terminal. Um, for those of you a little more experienced, there is something called Tmux that is actually really easy. It lets you split your terminal screens I use it sometimes, but for some reason when I record, I don't use it. So uh, anyway, for now, it's just separate separate terminals. But either way, we see that the scan finished, and we do see that port 873 is rsync. So what I know rsync from is I've had customers in previous jobs use rsync as a migration tool to migrate files to and from a location. So that's really interesting that it's open. Uh, let's go ahead and... First, I think it makes sense to try to see if we can connect using rsync, using the built-in tools. Um, I'm not 100% on this, but rsync is typically used in a lot of Linux distributions right out of the box. So if we do like rsync, just enter. Yeah, there we go. So it is installed. We have a bunch of options here. Now the option in particular I really want is, where is it? I don't even know, let's see. Oops, I think I might have saw it. Um, I'm looking for, it's. I believe it's list. Here, let's do rsync grep list. rsync help. Let's do that. Dash dash help grep list. Okay, there's the option I was looking for. So dash dash list only. So what this option will do is allow us to actually read the contents of the share on the other side, essentially. So it won't download anything, it won't copy any files, it'll just let us read or list only the contents of it. So that's definitely the one we want. So the syntax is going to be rsync dash dash list only. Then we're going to specify rsync as our protocol, colon forward slash forward slash, then we'll specify the IP of our target system. And that should be enough on its own. Let's hit enter. Okay, great. We do see that we got a result here. So the name of this share is public, and this is just kind of like a label. This is just saying it's an anonymous share, which is good for us because we should be able to read it knowing that it's an anonymous share. I just want to explain that because some people will make the mistake of thinking that these are two separate shares. This is just the share name right here. So that's the one we want. So we can actually look into it. If we do, let's do up arrow, we'll do rsync list only we'll specify that ip we'll add a colon forward slash and then the name of the share in this case it'll be public and let's hit enter all right and we do see that we get back a directory with a flag inside of it so what we can do at this point if we want to download it is we can actually use rsync without the list only option so what this is going to look like we're going to go here and remove list only and actually we're going to remove everything except this IP. So we're going to do rsync to that IP. Then we'll do colon colon. Some of the syntax is kind of funny with rsync. Um, we'll just do public forward slash flag dot txt. Then we need to specify what it's going to be named on our local side. So I'm going to name it flag. Uh, I'll just say flag dash DL dot text, just so we know it's a different file or hopefully I'm explaining that right. It's the same file, but we're copying it. I want to be able to easily identify it on our local system. So it should have that DL extension on it. So let's hit enter. 
All right, so it looks like it finished. Let's go ahead and do an LS in that directory. I just refresh my screen for a second here to give us some space. We do see that we have flag-dl.txt. If we do cat, I'll show you a little trick here, by the way. If there's a file in the directory you wanna read, you don't have to type out the whole name. You can do one letter and then you can do tab to complete it. Um, also with the cat command, you could do cat F and then an asterisk. That will technically read any file that starts with an F in that directory, but in this case, that works. So if I do that and hit enter, it does read the contents of that file. So just a little shortcut I like. I usually do the tab, but the asterisk can be helpful too, especially if there's multiple files. That said, we got our flag. That was a pretty easy one. Definitely a learning curve playing with rsync. One of the cool things about rsync though is you can actually use it on your local system to copy to and from different directories. And it's something real easy to set up in your home lab. So you could have two Linux machines, use rsync on both sides, play with sending files, receiving them. And there's so many options as you probably saw with rsync that it's definitely one of those tools I would just get familiar with at least, because I'm sure we'll see more of it as we progress in Hack the Box. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you found this video useful. Until next time, stay nerdy.